Good morning, everyone. I'm Alex Finney. Thank you so much for joining us. It is July 4th weekend. Everyone wants to grill. They want to enjoy those fireworks, get outside. So we're not going to waste any time. Let's get right to the weather, which you all want to know about. Michael, yes. fill everybody in. All right, let's do it. Yesterday, it was hot. Guess what? It's going to be hot again today. Live Ooh. look outside on this Sunday fun day, shall we? Go outside together? Yes. Who wants to go? Let's do it. There we go. <laughs> Live look. Uh, Michael Smith and Alex Finney here waking you up. Thanks for joining us on this Sunday morning. Okay, temperature 76 right now in Birmingham. Yesterday at the airport, the high temperature 97. We typically top out right around 90 for this time of year. So above the marking, we're going to do it all over again. Right now, we got a light north northeast wind at three miles an hour, hour by hour forecast. All right, here's what you need to know to get up and go. If you're going to make it a pool day, continue that barbecue, whatever it is, don't forget to hydrate and keep the sunscreen on. It only takes about 15 minutes to get a sunburn. Uh, lower 90s by 12 o'clock this afternoon, 96 or so at 2 and continuing through the day, 97, 2 to 3, and it'll feel more like 100 when you factor in the humidity. Storm chance relatively low at 20% uh, today. It goes up just a little bit for Monday, the 4th, to 30%, mainly afternoon and early evening, widely isolated storms. The storm chance and coverage increases Tuesday into Wednesday and Thursday. High temperatures come down just a bit into the lower 90s. Alex? All right, thank you, Michael. New this morning, Congress will not be on Capitol Hill as much this summer as they prepare for elections. That means they only have two weeks left to get any work done. CBS 42 News congressional correspondent Alex Schumann tells us what work will be waiting for them when they get back. The Senate and the House will be back for a couple of weeks after the 4th of July, but then they're gone until September. On this vote, the yeas are 52, the nays are 48. Senate Democrats blocked a bill providing money to fight the Zika virus, citing Republican add-ons like cuts to the Affordable Care Act and cutting one part that would have banned Confederate flags at federal cemeteries. Well, we do know that Puerto Rico right now is the hardest hit, which is why another provision that they have in here to cut health care funding through the Affordable Care Act for Puerto Rico also makes absolutely no sense. We have a public health crisis descending on our country. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell plans to have a third vote on the bill when they get back from their 4th of July break. They will also be voting on immigration bills, one of which blocks congressional money from going to any sanctuary city. That's where local law enforcement officials are not allowed to cooperate with the federal government to deport someone. Real progress on changes to gun laws is unlikely. That's even after all of the attention the issue got from last week's sit-in by Democrats on the House floor. In Washington, I'm congressional correspondent Alex Schumann. New this morning, Donald Trump is facing backlash for his tweet that included the Star of David. The tweet showed the Jewish symbol over images of Hillary Clinton and dollar bills. The message over the star said, most corrupt candidate ever. Some critics quickly slammed the tweet as anti-Semitic. Trump's account tweeted the image Saturday morning before changing it and tweeting the message again less than two hours later. Now the new version, if you look at it, has the same images, but it's without that star. Now new this morning, speaking of Donald Trump, Donald Trump, well, he may not have picked a running mate just yet, but there's one person current Vice President Joe Biden would like to see in the White House should Trump win this November. That person is former House Speaker Newt Gingrich. Newt and I disagree. He's one of the brightest guys I know. He knows, he knows the government. He knows the issues. And uh, I would feel better, even though we disagree philosophically. No, I'm not, I'm not being facetious. I feel better knowing that there was somebody there with the depth and gravitas on the issues uh, that, uh, that Newt possesses. Biden says that he's not endorsing Gingrich, but he says he trusts him because of their friendship. However, even with the encouraging words, Gingrich says don't count on him to accept a vice presidential offer. There's a lot of speculation. There is none of you should bet, as a friend of mine did on Fox last night, Karen Tamaldi, who's a political reporter at The Post, bet all hundred dollars of her phony money that I would be chosen and then wrote me a note and said, with my track record of betting, you are now guaranteed not to be the choice. 
Sources say Gingrich and New Jersey Governor Chris Christie are on Trump's short list of possible running mates, but Gingrich says he would only take that offer if he could do meaningful work in Trump's administration. Well, sticking with politics, new this morning, the Democratic Party releases what it calls the most ambitious and progressive platform draft in its history. Listen to this. The draft was voted on last week in St. Louis with input from Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders' respective campaigns. It calls for a $15 an hour minimum wage, an end to the death penalty, mass incarceration, and for reforming what it calls the broken immigration system. The draft also says the nation should run entirely on clean energy by the mid-century. It will be adopted by a larger committee in Orlando next week and put to a vote at the Democratic National Convention later this month. Family and friends say goodbye to two young women shot and killed by their own mother. Taylor and Madison Sheets were remembered in their hometown of Decatur yesterday. Police say their mother, Christy, shot them at their Katy, Texas home last week, as many of you may remember. She was killed a few minutes later by officers responding to a 911 call. 22-year-old Taylor and 17-year-old Madison were born in Alabama before the family moved to Texas. New this morning, mosquitoes that can carry the Zika virus are found in all corners of Georgia, but many of the state's counties can't fight the insects because of lack of resources. Georgia has 25 reported cases of Zika, though all of the cases have been linked to travel outside the U.S. However, Listen to this. Health officials are worried locally transmitted infections could happen soon. A recent survey found at least 56 Georgia counties have no taxpayer funded mosquito control programs to spray neighborhoods. That's more than one third of Georgia's 159 counties. Well, the heat is on and there's no better place to cool off than at Alabama's Flash Adventure, of course. Well, yesterday we caught up with the crowds enjoying attractions like the wave pool you see here and water slides. We also got to chat with the general. And I know that may sound familiar because you've seen her, I'm sure, in many of their commercials. Pat Cook tells us business has increased since her family bought the park two years ago. We're doing better, and uh, we have put a lot of time and effort and work into making it a much better park, and people are noticing. They are noticing indeed. The 4th of July weekend is one of the busiest times of the year for Alabama Splash Adventure. Today, the gates are open from 11 o'clock in the morning until 7 o'clock at night. Well, your time right now is 636. After the break, fireworks are on the way. We let you know where to catch the show and how to get home safely this holiday weekend. All right, good Sunday morning to you. Live look outside. The sun is up. Temperature right now in the mid 70s. Get ready for another hot afternoon. And speaking of fireworks, I know you want to know about the storm chance. We're going to talk about it on the flip side of this break.
You're watching the CBS 42 Morning News. Good Sunday morning to you, Central Alabama. Live look outside. The sun is up. Temperatures right now in the mid 70s, 76 in Birmingham. North northeast wind, real light at three miles an hour. Get ready. Temperatures are going to soar once again back into the upper 90s. Just like yesterday, topped out at 97. Our average high for this time of year is 90. So we're going to be at or above 90 by 12 o'clock this afternoon, mainly sunny. Satellite and radar loop across central Alabama over the last three hours. Uh, a little bit of what we call false return there with uh, that. Back off to the north and west, jet stream cutting across parts of Texas and Oklahoma. Showers and storms riding up and over that. Temperatures as we head through time with our future cast clouds, radar, and temperatures. Let's see what's up as we continue to truck on through the morning into the afternoon. Between 1 and 2, it looks like a couple of storms. Isolated showers are going to pop up near Pell City and Gadsden. They'll fade away pretty fast. Overnight into tomorrow morning, some patchy fog possible in spots. A few more clouds around, mild and muggy with temperatures in the upper 70s. And then as we get into Monday morning, uh, temperatures will start out in the 80s. And we could see a few storms popping from parts of northwest central Alabama as early as 4 o'clock on Monday. But it should not be a washout. Anytime you want the forecast, it's easy. Download our weather app. Search for it in the App Store and or Google Play Store. High temperatures hang on into the lower 90s. A storm chance Monday, 30 to 40 percent. It goes up to 50 percent on Tuesday. Okay, let's uh, talk about Mars and what scientists believe this photo may provide clues to the atmospheric history of that planet. NASA's Curiosity Mars rover captured this image of sand dunes on the red planet. And sand dunes are very similar uh, that appear here on Earth. You know, Mars and Earth have got a lot in common except for the people <laughs> right. that uh, don't live there yet. Um, scientists say the larger ripples have distinctive uh, crest lines and NASA says Curiosity made the first up-close study of active sand dunes anywhere other than, guess where, planet Earth. Earth. <laughs> Look at that. Mm -hmm. Well, Pretty. thank you, Michael. We kind of mm -hmm. learned a little bit we there. We did. We, we want to say hello to one of our loyal yes. viewers, David Flannery. Yes. Good morning. He's always so interactive with us on social media, so we just want to shout you out and say thanks so much for watching us. Every weekend it feels like David's watching. I feel like it yeah, too. Yeah, so thanks, David. Well, coming up, if you find that you can't drive on the 4th of July, that's okay. You can get help. The Tow for Life program starts at 6 p.m. on Monday and continues through 6 a.m. Tuesday morning. You can get a free tow up to 10 miles. The number to call is 800-222-4357. Your car has to be drivable to qualify for the free tow. Always keep your people safe there. Well, the 4th of July is now just a day away, and you've probably got big plans, right? Well, just in case you're still trying to feel them out, figure out what you're going to do, we have a list of fireworks displays in several counties at WIAT.com. We'll also be adding to that list as we get new locations, so be sure to check back there often. And of course, don't forget to share your patriotic side with us. We love seeing your photos. Send your patriotic pictures to report it at WIAT.com. Check back Monday for our patriotic slideshow. Well, your time right now is 643. A Jefferson County Sheriff's deputy is coming home today. Still ahead, more details on today's special homecoming days after a standoff in Birmingham. You're watching the CBS 42 Morning News. We will be right back after the break.
It's not 4th of July without some delicious barbecue, and the perfect place to get that is, of course, Dreamland Barbecue. It is a staple in Alabama. Now, Betsy McAtee is here with us today, and this year, y'all are doing something really special. You're giving back to veterans. What motivated y'all to do that? Well, one of our core values is um, thanking our military service members, and this fits in well with our core values. So it's our way of giving back to our military military service members and their family for the sacrifices that they make throughout the year for us. Oh, absolutely. And what's more American than barbecue? And y'all are open on 4th of July. Yes, we're open all day 4th of July in all of our restaurant locations. And what can people expect when they come in on the holiday? When you come into Dreamland Barbecue on the 4th of July, we, we want to celebrate with our friends and family, and we're just excited that you're coming in to eat with us. You're going to have our hickory grilled ribs, our delicious side items, our banana pudding, our chocolate drink, all in a fun atmosphere. Well, that sounds just like so much fun and the perfect thing people can do. Maybe they could even come get some to go to take with them on a picnic. Absolutely. We have a carryout special, 4th of July carryout special, which is three slides of ribs, two sides, and a loaf of bread and a quart of sauce. Oh my gosh, that sounds delicious. <laughs> and if you call in one day in advance, we throw in a free gallon of our famous Big Daddy iced tea. Oh, I was about to say, and if y'all have not tried this, I'm having the sweet tea right now. It is so delicious. You're so sweet to talk with us today, and I know that 4th of July is going to be huge, especially since people are able to give back. And this is the last weekend, correct? Yes, we're in the okay. final few days of our Say Thank You with Barbecue campaign, and we're inviting people to come in and write a letter to thank our military service members. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Lillian Lalo with CBS 42. The preceding portion of the CBS 42 Morning News was sponsored by Dreamland Barbecue. You're watching the CBS 42 Morning News. I'm well, coming. here I'm comes coming. Michael. Yep. Checking uh, that forecast for us, right, Michael? Not tardy <laughs> for the party. I was just updating some new data that came in. Fashionably late, as they say, right? But you were just you were just checking on that weather. Yeah. It's Fourth of July weekend. Getting the latest for yeah. everybody. All right, let's uh, check out what's happening across. <laughs> Northern Alabama, North Central Alabama on this Sunday morning. Uh, satellite and radar over the last uh, three hours. Things are pretty quiet for the time being. Going to widen this shot out. Hey, if you have travel plans today, heads up. The jet stream cutting across parts of the uh, Ohio River Valley and down into Texas. And this is where the real active weather will be for the remainder of the holiday weekend. Let's walk through time. This is what I was updating our new in-house model data. So let's do this hour by hour. Starting at 8.30 this morning, temperatures will be in the upper 70s, lower 80s, and then pop-up storms between 1 and 2.30 this afternoon. Ooh, is it going to be hot out there? 96 is going to feel more like 106. So keep that in mind. Lightweight, light-colored clothing, H2O, you really know that is the way to go to stay hydrated. All right, overnight into tomorrow morning, temperatures in the mid to upper 70s. Monday morning, same deal. And we could see those pop-up storms at times Monday afternoon. Uh, here's a look at a line of storms perhaps developing, cutting in across northwest central Alabama. Again, this is just a little bit out in time, but this is some new model data. Want to get you up to speed with that. And anytime you need the forecast, it's easy. What do you need to do if you haven't done so already? Download our weather app. You can find it. It's free in the App Store and or Google Play Store. So the storm chance today, low at 20%. Goes up to 30% Monday. Late Monday night, really overnight Monday into Tuesday, 50%. High temperatures in the low to mid 90s. Our average high for this time of year. Alex, have you been listening at all to me? Listening. What is it? 90. 90. You got it. Overnight <laughs> lows in the mid 70s and the storm chance will hang out through uh, Friday. Again, not a washout as we get into the holiday weekend, but remember if you're outdoors and you hear thunder, what's your cue? Go indoors. Go inside. I got, I got you got it. It's like a pop quiz. I've never been good at those things. Just spur of the moment. Well, anyway, your time right now is 650. A popular lake is closed this 4th of July weekend. Next the reason why and what's being done about it. Plus, if you're planning a vacation, we'll tell you one place that looks good as new. Why you should grab a ticket to Italy. Sign up, please. We'll be right back.
You're watching the CBS 42 Morning News. Right now, with July 4th just a day away, a popular fishing spot in Oxford is closed. The Hillaby Reservoir is closed because of concerns of alligators in the water. A person out on the water spotted an alligator and uploaded the footage to YouTube. The reservoir sits on Anison Waterworks and Sewer Board property. Some people say this isn't the first time they spotted this gator. My son's friend had the, seen the alligator and took video of it on his phone. Mm -hmm. And you know, I had a cousin that's told me he used to fish out there all of our life, and he said he's seen three or four of them out there. Aniston Waterworks and Sewer Board says Hillaby Reservoir is will remain closed until further notice. Well, right now, a state appeals court has upheld the conviction of a man who killed three people, including two Auburn football players. The Alabama Court of Appeals, Criminal Appeals, denied Desmonte Leonard's appeal. Leonard was convicted in 2014 of killing three people during a party at an apartment complex. It happened near the Auburn University campus in 2012. Three other people were wounded. Leonard is currently serving a life sentence at the St. Clair Correctional Facility in Springville. Right now, the family of an elderly missing Tuscaloosa man is now offering a $1,000 reward for information on his whereabouts. Emmett Kaiser, as you see him right here, hasn't been heard from since Monday evening. We're told that Kaiser does have trouble getting around without a wheelchair. As a matter of fact, yesterday, family, police, and volunteers continue to search for him outside his home in Colling. Right now, the busy 4th of July travel period is in full force, and extra state troopers are out on the roads to make sure everyone stays safe this holiday weekend. Troopers are reminding drivers and passengers to buckle up. Statistics show seat belts do save lives, and while out this weekend, troopers are also looking for impaired drivers. They're participating in the National Drive Sober or Get Pulled Over campaign. Also new this morning, we've learned a Jefferson County Sheriff's deputy shot during a standoff Thursday on Dowell Avenue. He'll be coming home today. The deputy was shot twice in the leg, and he's been in the hospital since and is recovering from a surgery that he had on Friday. If you would like to send him your well wishes, just head to the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office Facebook page. Well, finally, listen to this. If you're planning a Roman holiday, right? A popular tourist stop is back and better than ever. The Colosseum in Rome is undergoing another phase of restoration work. The multi-million dollar project includes cleaning to remove years of soot and grime from the ancient area. The first stage of the restoration included gently removing the grime from water misters and brushes by hand. Next up, a visitor center with a cafeteria is on the way, along with fixing the bottom level where gladiators prepped and lions and tigers were kept before events. Look at that, Michael. Trip to Italy for two? Uh, yes, please. <laughs> and uh, if, if we can't get that done quick enough, I know what we can get done. We can roam around right here at home. It's going to be hot outside again this afternoon. Got up to 97 yesterday. Boom, right back up to 97 again this afternoon. The storm chance increasing on the 4th, 30 to 40 percent chance of seeing those storms. A better chance really Tuesday into Wednesday morning. High temperatures, uh, low to mid 90s will feel more like the low 100s at times. Lightweight, light colored clothing, hydrate, lots of water. Stay cool. Don't forget it only takes five to 10 minutes to get a sunburn. Uh, that's all I got to say. You want to add anything else, Alex? Well, I would just like to add to this. I hope everyone has a wonderful and safe 4th yes. of July. Enjoy the fireworks, enjoy the food, and enjoy that warm weather. We will see you back here tomorrow morning starting at 4.30 a.m. CBS 42 Morning News with Art Franklin. Take care, everyone. Bye.